So if your goal is just to get from here to the end of your life, go buy a bunch of stuff. <laughs> if you want to thrive, live life, experience life, do what you intend, develop a skills-based mindset because skills will take you to thriving, not surviving. Welcome to Thriving the Future podcast, where we're finding positive solutions to thrive in the tough times ahead. I'm Scott. I'm back with Perpin, and this week, episode two, we're talking about skills over stuff. So, what do we mean by that? Let's let's back it up and look at it from a uh, high level or a protocol standpoint. I think basically you have two theories about how you're going to live there. You've got stuff. I'm going to buy what I need in the future, or I'm going to continue to buy things in the future. I'm going to collect stuff to do things. Skill says, I am going to learn and practice what I need to do to live the life I want to. I'm going to practice these skills. These things become skills so that they are my lifestyle rather than always falling back on buying stuff or getting into a bunch of stored goods or hoarded items. Right. Exactly, because if you if um, if you have if you, so you have all your stores. A lot of our audience overlaps probably with some folks that prep or at least do some preparation. That's not a bad thing. Yeah, we're not saying that that's bad. We're not saying don't buy things, but make choices based on that, and then learn how to use your stuff, and then also develop the skills so you're not as dependent on the stuff, right? If you don't have the skills to use it, then it's still as useless as it was sitting on the store before you bought it. So let's dive in a little bit more to that. How how do we develop those skills? And and uh, we've had some some requests to actually dive into some skills. We're we're talking more from a protocol standpoint first, right? Why do we need the skills? I can't teach you very many skills on a podcast. Right. Exactly. If you want to learn to garden until you've done it, you've learned nothing. You have knowledge, no skill. Mm -hmm. Taking what you know in your head and actually doing it, being hands on with a thing repetitively over and over and over builds a skill. Right. And the skills don't come overnight. So take gardening, for example. If you decide you're going to garden and you move to some land, then it takes a certain amount of time to detox your soil so that... Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's no matter where you're at, it has something that's residual in there. You, if your inputs come in, you have to be careful so that they're not toxed up. It gets, it gets even even and more finite than that, right? Right. Because most of the places I've lived, I had a more clay-based soil. Mm -hmm. Here I've got something between clay and a sand silt. Right. I can't plant at the same times. So my whole rhythm of planting in the spring and all that changes because the soil is different. It behaves different. I have to water more because it dries out or sinks in farther. It doesn't puddle and pool and hold. So if you go someplace else, everything you learned in gardening, you have to start over at square one. You put the seed in the ground and you learn what's going to happen. And until you've been through that experience once, you can have all the seeds you want. Until you've been through that process once, you can't figure it out for the next plant. Sure. And every time you go, you have to be ready to start over learning that process again. And that's a skill in itself. Mm -hmm. And it throws you curveballs every every year. So I have more, I have real hard clay soil, mm. even though I'm right down the road from you. And then um, every year, it throw, I've been gardening on a more large scale for six years now, seven, this is mm -hmm. the seventh season. And every year, there's some sort of curveball. I was like, all right, this tomatoes are turning out great. Blight. <laughs> yeah. So, and, you and, know. And you got to go right back to the skill of how do I diagnose the problem? Mm -hmm. How do I find the problem? How do I adjust the problem? And what is my strategy going forward? And that's a skill in itself. That's a problem solving skill. Sure. If you don't solve any problems, you'd get bad at it, right? Just like if you do not exercise, your muscles atrophy skills atrophy you have to be continually practicing if you just have a pile of stuff that you're going to go to when the times get tough and you don't have the skills that stuff is not going to help you you're going to have a whole new frustration of learning to use that stuff combined with the tough time mm -hmm. and that'll stress you out 
So You've not only out. does it not only does it require practice, but also there's a certain amount of learning. There may be some even some apprenticeship. If you yeah, have you've to got learn to, you've got to go to else. somebody, and even if you're not learning, right? Even the master of it learns from the student. Because they see it in a different way. They approach it in a different way. You have to tell them a different thing to learn it. So everyone's approaching it. When it becomes a skill and it becomes a part of your life and it's something you're doing all the time, it's a completely different thing. It's no longer stuff. It's, a, it's what you use. It is a tool. It turns stuff into tools. And that's more the thing than how do I garden and how do I go deer hunting and how do I do this in, how do I raise this animal or how do I raise that animal? There's a skill in learning how to do that. There's a skill in finding, connecting with and asking the right questions so that you can go do it on your land and then finding the things that don't work for you and coming back. Mm -hmm. That's a conversational skill. It's a problem solving skill. It's a community level skill. It is a cooperation skill and that becomes a lifestyle. The more of those skills you are doing, the more, your life is something other than what it is now. So how do we get there, right? It's not about I need to run out and uh, become a homesteader or well, buy land. I mean, we'll cover that in a, in a different episode. If, if the listener's interested in that, then we'll have some tips on that in a, in a future episode. But there's folks that are in the, in the city or in the suburbs, most likely, that developing skills is important they may not go and grow all of their food for themselves but it still applies to them because we're talking about protocols rather than specific skills okay you can have a pile of food in your pantry do you cook it ever you need to be on youtube watching a cooking video and trying recipes everything you do there applies we processed chickens um earlier this year right mm -hmm. i processed my first chicken i did better at it than i thought i would because I had watched food TV and things like that, right? And saw people parting out chickens. So I went and bought frozen chickens and parted them out. What I learned there was where the joints are and how to remove them with a knife in a way that I wouldn't have had otherwise. Right? That was a skill that actually applied to this part over here that I never imagined I would sure. need or would apply. So step one in acquiring any skills is to gather information. If you want to garden, then you need to gather some gardening information. And then you need to do something. You're in the city. I was in the city at one point. I had a flower box on the patio. Mm -hmm. Start somewhere. It dried out. I went and got a self-watering one so I could put enough water to get there. I grew carrots. I grew some flowers, right? You know, grow the flowers so that people don't complain. But in there, you can have carrots. You could do um, lettuces. Uh, kales, um, herbs. Herbs are a big one. Mm -hmm. Fresh herbs are very expensive in the store, but they will grow like crazy in a pot, right? A pot of mint would keep you in mint for the year. Right. It doesn't have to be a big one. A good 12-inch pot of mint and basil and that, properly taken care of, will provide more than you can need. I mean, I did that, and I dried, and I had some that went through winter, and sure. then I didn't buy herbs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've grown uh, oregano, for example, and the stuff you buy at the store, even this, uh, the fresh kind, is so old that it just doesn't taste right. right. So I've had, I've had people say, wow, this oregano is amazing. Okay, yeah, that's because it's fresh. Right, so, 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 so you're getting that and you're using it in your foods. Mm -hmm. So you're gaining, you, you started combining skills. So you have stuff you can do. You have things you can do with your stuff. Right and your life starts to change. Mm -hmm. So maybe you're already growing the herbs. So go look up how to propagate them. Growing a tomato, learn how to save the tomatoes. Growing the herbs, learn how to save the seeds. When are they going to seed? Learn how to do cuttings. All that fits in a city lifestyle that applies to something else. And maybe you can do that for the guy that's out farming, or you can do that for the farm or the intentional community that you're with. You can do things like that. In an apartment, I know people that do eggs. They will get eggs that are fertile from people. They will put them in the incubator. They will incubate them and they will take care of them all there. When they hatch, they go back to the farm. People in the city can do that. There are many, many, many things. That, that's options of practicing skills in the city. You're going to have to find the ones that apply to you. What is the thing you want to know? What is the thing you don't know? Go get some information and then you have to try. As long as it stays in your head, it's not a skill. It's knowledge because you have it. 
But if you don't use it, you'll start forgetting it. Like right. my times tables, I need to go practice them again because I have not used them every day. And some of them I go, uh, oh, right? right? Don't take that uh, at that one. And it's about living an intentioned life. Do I want to be dependent on the job? Walmart, Amazon, and Costco. Or do I want to have some skills so that I can use my stuff that is now tools with those skills in cooperation with other people that I know and will be here tomorrow. Because Walmart doesn't care about me. And you may not be able to grow all of your own food because, you know, like on my land, I've got squash bug problems. So that's where community comes in because then, say, you don't have as much problems with squash bugs, but then you can't grow something else. So then we decide at the beginning of the year even we do some seed swapping. We've done that a couple of times. Right. And that's that's really, we highly recommend to to our listeners. Plants and cuttings too. I mean, yeah. that's... Plants yeah. and cuttings and everything else. Get together with your friends. Get together with your community. Swap seeds. Make even if they're Even if they're seeds that you bought. Right? Every gardener loves a plant or a seed. Sure. Make friends. You've had, you have stuff that someone else doesn't have, some variety, and you'll be amazed with the conversation that goes on over the table on that, in that session, right? So right. you bring it out and they go, ooh, you literally have people go, ooh, wow, that's great. I really would like to grow that. And they'd never thought of it before. So maybe it's right. fava beans or something like that or some nasturtiums. Right. Nasturtiums being the uh, vining flower that has a mustardy taste to it that you can put on salads and things like that. But they're super bright colored. I didn't know what they were. But in one, one of our seed swaps, it was like, whoa, what's that? And I went on a garden tour. I also saw it and, and talked to people about how it was used and then started growing it myself, interplanted with some of the other things and then and then putting it on my salad. And it was good. But you have, you have to practice them. I think that's the main thing. So Sure. And even if even if you live in the country, then that window box or that little raised bed on by the back door grows the herbs. Sure, you're growing your squash and you're growing your other stuff out, your um, staple crops out in your garden, your potatoes, things like that. Um, but you're you're growing your your herbs that you're going to walk out the back door and you're going to clip. I want some mint today for yeah. my tea. And you go out and you grab some and then and then you don't have to walk all the way back to the garden to do that. Right. And, and you start organizing your life that way. Mm -hmm. And now that you're making friends by trading seeds and plants and stuff, then you can start sharing other skills. That's kind of how our GSD workshops got started. Right. And we call them a no we call them a no experts GSD workshop. None of us are an expert on the thing. We get together we discuss it, we share the information we have, we share the experiences we have, and we're each in that teacher, learner, master relationship where mm -hmm. the person, this person may have mastered it to a certain degree and we're all behind, but we all start catching up as we see the way we do it. And we each learn something new from that gathered information. And that makes community even more powerful because once by yourself, versus that group of minds. Two minds are better than one. Everyone says it, do they mean it? Sure. Who are the minds that you're around? Because the minds you're around are gonna determine who you are. So when you're learning your skills, one of your intentions need to be, I need to learn to be around people that are going to push me further in my skills and mm -hmm. that. I think. Plus I you learn more when you are teaching it to some other people. So say, right. you're not, none of us are the experts, right? But you may have a little bit more experience with it than I do. Right. And then we're working it out together. Or you read a different book than I did. True. That has and one little point that I would not have known, right? I mean, Correct. And then we learn while we're doing it. We learn while we're teaching it. And uh, we learn by doing it. So we've done uh, processing chickens. Yeah. We and, did that. and we've done that. We've, we've hung some fence which was new and we watched some welding and some electrocution. That was pretty awesome. <laughs> Electrocutions are good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> somebody was, somebody was touching, uh, the, the pole when, uh, the welder touched it and got, yeah, yeah that was, that was instructive. <laughs> that I don't was pretty do good it. feedback. <laughs> I don't want to do it. <laughs> right. And then we've, uh, processed ducks. And the interesting thing about the ducks was that they were older ducks they were big ducks. I mean, their meat ducks looked like geese. Yeah. And uh, so it was Jumbo not... Jumbo peckins, I believe. Yeah. And it was not possible for us to pluck them. 
So basically, if the if the ducks are old enough and you immerse them and you pluck them, you still get a bunch of pin feathers and it's just not fun. So you never end up with a positive solution. So the not fun part is the cooking and eating part because yeah. you have all the pin feathers. Yeah, just you still have some pin, pin feathers sticking out of the flesh, right? Um, so we did it differently this time by skinning the, the duck with the feathers on. So it's like... If you took a chicken, a whole chicken, and then you took the skin off, except the feathers were on, and there was a lot of feathers, and there was a wing and everything else, so you know that was that was interesting, and and then we worked through it. It was a different process. Yeah, and you can see a post on that on the on the website. We have some pictures of of how that worked out, but then you have a different. You also have a different cooking mechanism because you've taken the fat and the skin off, so now yes. you have to learn how to cook that. You need a new cooking skill, a new right. technique from your cooking, another tool. Mm -hmm. So those are some of the examples that we've done from our um, GSD's workshops. Um, it also making over buying instead of, in, so we've talked about process and we've talked about growing. Mm -hmm. um, we've also, as we talked about in the last episode, we make vinegar now or we make mead because, yes. hey, we found out I don't like, I don't like vinegar. I've always not liked vinegar. So if I put vinegar in something, it overwhelms everything in the taste. But when you do it yourself, it's different. Just like the growing the oregano yourself right. is different. It It is not an industrial process that sure. has removed what you can do as a small time artisan. Mm -hmm. And we're going to get better at it. And that's yeah, a skill the, and you got to practice it. Yeah. One of the things you learn by doing that is that a lot of vinegar that's on the shelf is actually not from food sources sometimes like the white vinegar that you buy that you make pickles or with or whatever sometimes it's wood alcohol sometimes it's because uh, the bacteria eat the alcohol and turn it into vinegar acid yeah. right you see yeah and then turn it into vinegar and then uh <laughs> the source of the alcohol is not always it what, doesn't need to be what anything. you would do so well, then when you use an apple you get a different flavor correct than when you use a pear yeah or chocolate right or molasses, whether sure. you use honey or sugar or brown sugar, it all affects the flavor. Just like making a wine depends on the grapes in the region they grew in, or a beer, what elements and mm -hmm. things you put into it. Yeah, it. Right. So one of the things we've done is, I made it with, uh, I made both beet vinegar and asparagus vinegar using honey, whereas you use sugar, and the, the, the flavor profile the is, is different. Very different. Mm-hmm. And I actually like it because it has a it has a little bit of a honey aftertaste to it, and it and because honey doesn't have as much nutrient in for the for the yeast, it doesn't go bonkers in there and it's down it, it to still the, gets to the same pH exactly. But it doesn't burn in your mouth mm -hmm. exactly, and it's, it's almost a, drinkable. Yeah, and it's almost. really it's really good for putting on uh, on salads, and that's right. why I, that's what I use it for. Hmm. Whereas if you were going to make some oxymel or some sort of medicinal, you um, might want something or fire cider, then right. you probably want some real heavy duty strong stuff. And neither of us would have guessed there was so much to vinegar. Yeah, exactly. We 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 could have a couple gallons of it sitting around in our stuff, mm -hmm. but now we've got this interesting item that we can exchange, something to communicate about, something to try out, something to learn, and found out we know almost nothing about vinegar sure yeah and you yeah and you learn that the same way doing some of these other things too so so how does this affect us when we get to tough times because we're going to get there i mean right tough times come no matter whether it's you know you stubbed your toe three times today or the toddler won't stop growing or whatever you have a tough day that sure. is a tough time and there are potentially worse ones right but you're always going to have something tough going on so how does skills help us over stuff in that situation well for one thing you don't have to go run out and buy some more stuff because you don't have any money for that say say my my crisis is not the world falling apart it's i lost my job okay right yeah no one else around me has lost their job i lost my job so that's a that's a crisis most especially in it it takes at least eight weeks if you're lucky uh if you get you process right away you're going to have at least to suck up eight weeks of living off of something either your stores or your you know reserves or whatever else right yeah, and, that's a good uh, reason to have them but yeah, yeah, if you don't have to use that, them up 
Yeah. Because your skills take them or spread them farther, then sure. that's a good thing, yes. Yeah, if you have augmented your, your income with other income streams, then that lessens the, the blow of that, that's skills. Right. And if you have learned some other things like chopping wood or something, then you're going to augment whatever. And it's, it's not from a stuff standpoint, but I didn't have to go buy anything. I'm going to put another one on there. Okay. Um, Vin Armani on Pete Quinones' podcast talked about agorism. Mm -hmm. And he talked about the stuff and prepper type mindset of they are not agorists. An agorist has to need something. You cannot be completely self-sufficient, have all the stuff you need... And be interested in trade. You already have everything you need. Right. Stuff puts you in a mindset where you do not feel pressure to have community. And we talk, as we talked about last time, there has to be... Community arises from necessity and meeting needs. Right. And if your whole focus is on stuff... You have no need for workshops, you have no need for skills, and you, you get trapped in that mindset. And then you become lonely and isolated, and you become a... Hermit. Well, you become a hermit, but the, hermitism is not necessarily bad, because solitude is a good thing. Sure, sure. But if you get yourself trapped in a mindset of... that, and you become... you get lonely, you're not socializing, you devolve instead of evolve as right. a person right not that you become less than human but your personal human journey to being a better human mm -hmm. devolves whereas if you've got skills you have to be taking in information you have to be talking to people you need to do workshops you need to get experience you have things going mm -hmm. on you have hobbies other than watching tv you because the skills practicing them that's they come from hobbies. I mean, they delve right. into hobbies and they develop into, that's just what I do. And then I go add another one and another one and another one. Mm -hmm. Bushcrafting was something I watched some YouTube videos on. And I'm not good at bushcrafting, but I like it. It's kind of more of a hobby at this point. And bushcrafting is living off the land and stuff like that, right? It's being able to go out into the bush or the forest or the woods or wherever and camp or live well and the skills to do that or to be in a situation where you went on a hike and you were not you got injured or something and you weren't able to get out how do you get through that period till you get rescued or you get to help or you can okay. get back out of there and it's a lot of things like making spoons from tree a tree branch or how to build a fire and how shelter. to cook out there how to build a shelter how to do that survival level training stuff but more from a hobby standpoint than like they do in the military mm -hmm. but one of the things that i learned there or that is commonly said is that the more skills you have the lighter your pack can be if you know the plants and trees and the medicinals and the food sources in your local area you don't need the field reference guide because you know it sure you have to be going out there and foraging every spring and everything so you keep those plants recognized or you need to be growing them in your garden you, but you got that's a skill and if you don't keep it up it atrophies but that means you don't have to carry the book mm -hmm. if you know how to build a fire you don't need to take the fire starters as much right you can take some other things if you know how to get what, what's good tinder what's you know those things all that goes into not needing as much stuff because the world is abundant and that also goes back to the mental attitude, right? Mm -hmm. If you have stuff, you have a... There's abundance versus scarcity. Right. Thinking mindset, right? Mm -hmm. You're in that fight or flight mentality where your adrenaline's going and you're under stress, whereas skills is seeing abundance in the world around you and being able to see that because you have the skills to go, I can do this with this, I can do this with this, I can take this and make that. Mm -hmm. And allows you to see the abundance and it takes you out of that stress area, which is better for your health, yeah. better for your mental attitude, better for your life. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And not worry. And that also goes back to resilience. Resilience isn't just I've got X percent of my water taken care of or resilience. The term is that if you smush something, then it'll bounce back. Right. 
and without you know losing something in the process right so how resilient are you to be able to bounce back when the tough times come right and this also does something very interesting it moves you from surviving to thriving mm -hmm. so if your goal is just to get from here to the end of your life go buy a bunch of stuff <laughs> if you want to thrive live life experience life do what you intend develop a skills-based mindset because skills will take you to thriving not surviving good point you're not uh, closing the front gate and rolling up the compound and I and don't need to because there's nothing out, out the that, buckets and there's nothing out there that threatens me because it is not scarcity right. it is abundant mm -hmm. abundance changes that I don't have a threat I don't have to protect my stuff because I have the skills to go get more stuff if you come take my stuff wow right I don't have to worry about it there's some concern, but not worry. I don't have to fret. You want to come take my stuff? I don't recommend it because I do get pissed off, right? <laughs> but in the end, I'm going to let you have it because I got the skills to go get more stuff. Yeah, that's you're, interesting. You're not, is, you're not taking my wealth. That's my, tilting my brain here because I, I still have that prepper. I've got to provide my way out thing and we'll talk a little bit about how that overlaps with religion ritual and everything else would and, you like me to take know. that to religion real quick <laughs> go ahead <laughs> are you depending on you or god and everybody says they're dependent on god they and, think they are yeah they're hoping they're not faithing right hoping and not fading wow faithing is i know god and god's going to take care of me mm-hmm and you can do this with skills, too. You can say, I have all the skills that I will ever need. Right. And that becomes another thing where you're hoping, not faithing. Right. Faithing is reliance, knowing from the relationship with God that God will do what's right for me in this situation sure. or help me through this situation. Skills means I don't have to try and control every little detail i don't have to have all the stuff to get there and that's a skill in itself that's a spiritual skill and you got to develop those two mm -hmm. and then develop the community so that you can help each other out if a person is in debt up to their eyeballs they're not helping anyone else out and then you know whereas where we talked about before if you have if you're living that abundance lifestyle what happened the first time you grew 10 tomato plants you had a lot of tomatoes. Right. And you maybe said, do I need 10 tomato plants? Because that's a lot of tomatoes. It's abundance. Natural systems provide abundance. They are, you pay what, five bucks for a packet of seeds? Sure. You get 10 plants out of it, and you have more tomatoes than you want to eat, and you're giving them to your friend. Sure. I had, you have enough to can. I had 300, I had 300 cherry tomatoes this year. Out right. of two, three plants. And uh, that doesn't include, I didn't count the ones that I popped in my mouth that I didn't carry back to the house. Right. And that created a new problem. You needed a new skill to keep those from all going bad. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You ate them. Right. Either, either. That's abundance. That's an abundance problem. I want that over, I don't see any way that I'm going to eat today, every day. That's thriving. Skills added onto that, dehydrating tomatoes or canning the tomatoes or whatever, takes that and gives you a supply of stuff, but it was stuff acquired from skills, not Walmart. Right. And you're going to do it again next year, and you're going to do it again next year, and you're going to do it again next year, and you're building real wealth, not wealth in little paper dollars that go away. Mm -hmm. And that's real resilience. You know? It's a so life. Back in the olden days, when you had stored food for the wintertime, you would start running out in March, and they called those the weeks of want. You didn't have Walmart. You didn't run down to Tough Walmart. times? Yeah, those were tough they times. They happened? Every year. Yeah. And wow. so how did they bridge the gap between the weeks of want and when the first crop came in, they would go in the forest and forage? You mean they needed skills? <laughs> and they would have skills to be able to recognize and that, they didn't this take a was a, that this was a morel and not a fake morel. And this was a chicken in the woods and not a poisonous mushroom. Right. Sounds like a skill to me. It does. Yeah. Sounds like thriving. So how do, like our, uh, how, do, how do our listeners take this to the next level then? 
What's the next step for them? They took the first step. They listened to this podcast. They okay. now have information. And I think the main information that they gained today is they're going to decide whether they want stuff or skills. Do they want to see the world as abundant or scarce? Do they want to live stressed out and worried? Or do they want a life of peace and experience and intention? And they're going to make a decision. They're either going to go buy no stuff or they're going to continue listening to us, other people, and get books and get information. And they're going to take the next step. They're going to take the information and then they're going to get hands on with it and they're going to do something and they're going to develop a skill and then they're going to practice the skill. Then they're going to make the skill a part of their life and it's going to be a habit. And it's going to be something they just do and they don't even know it's a skill anymore. And they're going to go find some more information. They're going to put the next one on. And the next thing you know, they'll be like us and they won't be having time to watch Netflix because <laughs> they're living. Yeah not hiding from the fact that their life is boring and miserable. That's a great stopping place. And once again, thank you for listening to Thriving in the Future podcast. You can check us out on thrivingthefuture.com and we'll be back next week.